Hi everyone, welcome to The Egg Whisperer Show. I'm Dr. Amy, your host, and on today's show, I'm gonna to talk to you about the five things that you need to know about sperm. And I've come up with an easy to remember way for you guys to ask your doctor these things that you need to know, and that's Ball's method. It sounds like a joke, but it's actually quite serious. I'm very serious about this. I've come to know from my experience in helping thousands of people that men are too often left out. Sperm is an equally important part of a healthy pregnancy. I'm not suggesting that we point fingers and say who's to blame, but we're in the age of problem solving and even better, problem prevention. Whatever the case may, may be, egg and sperm must meet to create a healthy embryo. That's what I'm focused on. And I know it sounds like it's pretty obvious and not rocket science, but I think sometimes we too often forget the importance of sperm. So let's invite men to the fertility party. And as you may have guessed from the name, this approach has everything to do with the dude part of the baby making equation. I wanna make it incredibly easy and socially acceptable to talk about sperm so now we start with the tushy method because that's where it all starts. The tushy method, that's T-U-S-H-Y, the five steps or test that you can do to understand your fertility. And this is for a woman to do to check her tubes, uterus, the S is for the balls part, hormones, and your genetics. And then if there's a sperm issue, that's where balls comes in. If after a tushy check, you learn that the sperm quality is low, I don't want you to be confused. I don't want you to, to think that, oh gosh, there's nothing I can do about it, because there certainly is. And that's why I created this method, to help men and their partners understand and remember these simple, simple steps to understanding their fertility and sperm health. It's really that easy. It is a checklist designed to not only understand your sperm health, but also how to improve it. <laughs> improve it. I think you guys know what I'm trying to say here. So let's start with how you get a sperm test. We are in an age where you don't have to go to a creepy closet inside some weird place with a window opening and a public uh, restroom door, for example, where people are constantly knocking. You can literally do it yourself at home. There are two easy tests that I refer my patients to and I want you to know about them. Yo sperm test, you don't even need to ship anything out from your house to get a result. You get to see a really cool video and you get a score. And the other test is Meet Fellow and you can go to meetfellow.com backslash egg whisperer and they give you a really nice report. This is done at home and you have to ship it out and they'll get your report within two days. And you can take that report and show it to your doctor. See how easy it is now? We don't have to make an appointment at a clinic and go there and travel and do this kind of stuff. You can do it in the privacy of your home. So let's talk balls. You have the report. Now you wanna see what you can do to make your sperm amazing. And if you know me, you know I love the word sparkle. And when you're in my office, I talk about looking at the sperm and watching them sparkle across the screen. When I do IUIs, I'm digressing a bit. I'll put the catheter in sometimes and put an abdominal probe on, the, on my patient's abdomen. And we see sperm sparkles and sperm showers as I push the plunger of the syringe once the catheter is at the top of the uterus. I'm not joking, I really do that. So the B is background genetics. The answer to why you're having sperm issues could definitely be in your DNA. If the sperm count and motility especially are low, then talk to your doctor about additional testing. These tests include chromosome analysis, this is done by blood, Y chromosome microdeletion, also a simple blood test, a carrier screen, either blood or saliva, and a sperm DNA fragmentation test. This is studied by looking at the sperm. It sounds like it's a lot, but honestly, these tests are very easy to do and they can give you answers and guide you as far as what you should be thinking about next. The A stands for anatomy. Don't Google image this stuff. Trust me, the pictures you might see might kind of scare you away from Google forever. I'm joking, of course. But a dilated vein on the testicle, also known as a varicocele, diagnosed through a pelvic, not a pelvic, but well, kind of pelvic, a scrotal ultrasound or an exam by a male fertility specialist, also known as a urologist, is a really common finding when a guy has low sperm counts. This can also reduce testosterone levels, affect the sperm DNA fragmentation test, so you can see why it would be so important to see if someone has a varicocele or not, 
because treatment can oftentimes, more often than not, result in healthier, better swimmers <clears throat> and more sparkly sperm. Now we have the L and that's lifestyle. There's more and more mounting evidence to suggest that lifestyle affects sperm count. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at all the things that go into our lifestyle. It's super important to have a normal BMI. Sounds cheesy, I know, but I want both of my patients, if it's a heterosexual couple, for example, to be the best version of themselves. I want you to be the best version of you, exercising most days of the week, eating very healthy, and the other things that I talk about is sleeping at least seven to nine hours if you can, eight would be ideal, decreasing stress, avoiding exposure to heat, limiting alcohol, avoiding, obviously, tobacco and marijuana, and review your medication list with your doctor. Sometimes you're on a medication that you didn't even know could block sperm fertilization, like a calcium channel blocker, or you've been taking testosterone, thinking that it could help sperm when the reality is that it's basically like a birth control pill for men. And lastly, look at the vitamins you're taking and see if you can add more. Some of the products that I recommend to my patients are Alpha Sperm. You can go to alphasperm.com and use the code, all in caps, EGGWHISPER50 for 50% off. I have no affiliation with any of the companies that I'm talking to you guys about. If I did, maybe I would be quitting my day job, and I'm not, not forever. And then the other product is through Theralogix, and that's Conception XR, and you can use the PRC code TUSHY, all caps, T-U-S-H-Y. So I recommend prenatals for my female patients and the same for my male patients for obvious reasons, because we want the best quality sperm so they can impress the egg and the egg will let them in and then we'll get even more beautiful embryos. And then almost done, we have the second L and that L is for labs. You know, as women, we're used to getting poked and prodded and getting all these hormones checked. And for guys, there's simple tests that we can do as well. And I'll give you that list. Lab tests can include testosterone, FSH, LH, estradiol. Yes, I did just say estrogen in men. It can be elevated and that's something that you might wanna know because if it is, there are steroids you could use like Arimidex to bring it down and increase sperm count and quality. Prolactin, TSH, vitamin D, and hemoglobin A1C to rule out pre-diabetes. And the reasons for a low sperm count could be low testosterone, high prolactin, a thyroid issue, diabetes, high cholesterol, and low vitamin D. And these things can all be treated. My goal is for you guys to know what your diagnosis is, to know what's in your control to fix it, and then do treatment so that your treatment is as successful as possible. So now for the S. And I'm not gonna sing on today's show. My sister, I actually promised her that I would never sing again. And I might lie, and I might sing. Let's talk about sex, baby. Good thing I don't have an audience because they'd be throwing tomatoes at me right now. But it is so important to talk about sex. And the reason why is we know for a fact the amount of sexual issues that can occur when a couple is trying to conceive. We know that having sex around ovulation isn't like the way it is in the soap operas and the telenovelas, although that would be amazing and awesome if it could be like that every time. The reality is it's work and it's annoying and sometimes people have hurt feelings and I get it, but I think it's super important to talk about sex with your doctor. As a fertility doctor, you can tell I have no problem talking about sex and I actually say things like, how's your sex life? When was the last time you guys had sex? And if the couple's looking at each other and they're like, three months ago? Then obviously we know there's an issue. So be sure to bring this up, don't be afraid. And see a sex therapist, talk to a urologist. Not all guys are gonna be comfortable talking to me, especially in front of their wives, but there are other docs out there who this is all they do is talk about sex and see how they can improve things in the bedroom. And at the end of the day, that can help with sperm. One question I, I, I get asked is, um, what can I do, for example, to prepare for an IUI or, or what suggestions do you have? And I say, you have to have sex leading up to it and don't save up. And the best position is the position that you're gonna enjoy the most. And the reason why I know this, let me tell you, if a guy feels super awkward and super stressed out for a semen collection for an IUI, his sperm is gonna not be as good compared with if it's a relaxed situation, 
So those are the things to talk about. What can you do to be in the mood around the time of collection, around sex, around ovulation, so that your sperm will sparkle? <laughs> I imagine guys looking down now saying, is my sperm sparkling? Maybe I should come up with a t-shirt that says that. I'm way funnier today than I've been yesterday. Okay, so you now understand my egg whisperer plan. You got the tushy, you got the balls, and together they make the egg whisper diet. And the diet isn't a recipe that my grandmother taught me. Unfortunately, no one taught me how to cook as a child. They only taught me about fertility medicine, being raised by a bunch of doctors. This is all we talked about. So the egg whisper diet is knowing your diagnosis before your IVF or infertility treatment, understanding the endometrium, which is the inside lining of your uterus, and then moving forward with treatment or your transfer. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. I hope you learned all about the balls method and now you'll go to your doctor and be like, what's up with my balls? <laughs> and I'll be like, huh? Stop watching her podcast. But in the meantime, I hope you'll tune back in. I hope you'll join my next class through eggwhisperschool.com. And thank you for watching and listening. I hope your sperm sparkles. <laughs>